Hey guys, and welcome to the ninth installment of my Ultimate Gill Making series. As a super quick reminder, all of these videos related to Gill are going to be under the Gill Making playlist on my channel, and as I add more Gill Making videos, this playlist will continuously be expanded and updated. I want to say today, strap on your beast belt because Today we are talking all about beast tribes and what kinds of gill they have tucked away for you, ready for the plucking. If this helped you in any way, this guide series or this video, and you want to help support my channel, I would be incredibly appreciative if you catapulted a dwarf at that like button. Don't worry, they have really good helmets. And had a Namazu party with my subscribe button. When it comes to people not making effective use of gill making sources, Beast Tribes quickly comes to my mind as content that people don't properly utilize. As kindly as I can say it. Uh, I've seen friends slow slow slither sand sell slither sand on the seashore for nearly nothing to people who are looking to take advantage of their ignorance, which Slither Sand has been one of the most lucrative and expensive crafting reagents during patch 5.3, and still is, adding insult to injury. So yeah, Beast Tribes, they are big, they are important for gill making, for even the highest cutting edge crafting, and I know for a fact, I absolutely have done a ton of them. So the thing about Beast Tribes is that each expansion has its own unique set of Beast Tribes, and all of these Beast Tribes have a very unique set of unlock methods, daily quests, and items to look out for, and due to the fact that we are focused very purely on what they can get for you gill-wise and only the most necessary details to make gill, I can't cover all of the specifics in this video, I have no hope of doing that. But if you go and search up basically how to unlock them on a website such as console games wiki which is a website i absolutely recommend this will detail all of the steps very specifically on what you need to do and since we're on the note of resources that i'd recommend i would also recommend as always garland tools i've recommended it multiple times throughout this guide series and i continue to recommend it when it comes to identifying items that you can sell on the market board from these various npcs and being able to drill down and see what they offer you this is a peerless tool if you just enter the currency into garland tools you can drill down and find out, okay, what NPC is selling this, what else do they have on offer, and figure out on your market board with Garland Tools side by side to the game client what is going to sell well. Absolutely recommend it, especially for the Beast Tribe method because you don't want to be running around everywhere just trying to find out what Beast Tribe sells what and what's even sellable. So strongly recommend it. Please use it. But let's go over a few things that are very important for anything when we're talking about beast tribes so everything for every beast tribe is that beast tribes have a particular reputation to them which is represented in a bar in your character screen and you need to fill this bar and level up your reputation for each beast tribe each of them is unique to that specific beast tribe so i can't go to the Kriotari and then to their reputation grind and get them all the way to the max and then expect to be able to go to the pixies and then have them treat me like some honored guest even though <laughs> they obviously should and as you unlock various levels of reputation, you gain access to more items from that particular beast tribe. These items can be purchased from the particular beast tribe vendor, and items may cost either special beast tribe token currency or gill, with the current high ticket items costing beast tribe tokens primarily. But more on that in a minute, but I want to emphasize really clearly they can either go for Beast Tribe tokens or Gil, especially when you're looking at a Realm Reborn, you can have things like the Kobold Vendor, where you can buy Blue Land Trap Leafs, which is something that I brought up in Market Board Flipping in an earlier video, that sell very well, and you buy them with Gil, rather than the specific Beast Tribe currency, so definitely be on the lookout for that. Sometimes it has nothing to do with Beast Tribe tokens, but you unlock a particular reputation, then you can buy selection of wares for gill likewise and flip them on the market board for a lot of profit but anyhow enough of that <laughs> so you get beast tribe tokens by doing one token per daily quest done or rather you do one daily quest for one token and that has to be with that specific beast tribe seems simple enough right but the issue is that with beast tribes you can only do a total of 12 beast tribe quests a day across any beast tribe quest but you are limited to specifically three quests from any particular single tribe per day, such as three for dwarves, three for pixies, three for Kritari, and then three for something like Namazu, 
and then you've hit your daily cap of 12, but you were able to do three across all of them. There is the possibility to do six of them if you do a reputation upgrade, but again, we are getting really nitty gritty if I start explaining all that. Basically, if you do a reputation upgrade, instead of three per day, you can get six per day. But again, exception, not the rule. But the main thing is that if you do three beast tribes for each particular beast tribe and you're capped at 12 maximum a day, that means you can do four beast tribes maxing them out. But let's look at a bit of an example now. Let's take the Qatari. So they can accept three quests from Queer Parasol, and then we can go and do them, run back, and then I get a tiny bit of gill, a token, and sometimes a cordial too, where the cordial sells pretty well from the market board. So obviously doing the daily quest from Queer Parasol really was profitable. But when in doubt, crafter and gatherer materia really are absolutely viable on the market board. So check out what your market board prices are. But what I have noticed is that the Ronkin rocking chair, which can be built from the aged oak lumber that you can get from the Katari NPC, really, really does sell well. Now the Pixies Beast Tribe is in here as an exception because I think that whenever we are talking about gill making, I, I should try and include a pitfall example. This Pixies Tribe follows the same rules of you do three quests and come back. But the big issue here is that there is not anything really profitable to make off of them and that the amount of time you're putting into it isn't worth it because ultimately the only items really worth selling are combat materia and if you've been following this series you know that hunts are probably the best way to get materia and flat out to be frank hunt trains are always going to be a better investment of your time in my opinion so i'd avoid the pixies but just a pitfall and now let's change over to the third beast tribe of the shadowbringers expansion which is the dwarves and the same rules apply to the dwarves as any other beast tribe limit of three per day get one beast tribe token per quest but these tokens buy very very expensive hot 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 items so slither sand can be bought one slither sand per beast tribe token and then these can be sold for quite a lot of gill or alternatively flipped and crafted into an item for even more profits we are currently in a market board slump and you can see it still sells really well on the market board on gilgamesh it's almost 10k per slither sand not to mention that there is also tons of crafter material here one thing I can say very clearly is crafter materia, gather materia, is much harder to get than combat materia. So very similar to the Katahari where you could get gathering materia, you have crafter materia here which sells really high. Check out your market board, see what is best for you to invest into and sell it. So with the beast tribes out of the way and checking out the prices on the market board, you can see with the range of crafter materials and materials from the beast tribes that Honestly, it really adds up. And so this is, again, just going to say, going to be very important that you use Garland Tools, in my opinion, to make this process really a lot easier. But let's start talking about the other Beast Tribes, because we have a lot of them. So for a rundown of all the Beast Tribes, Console Games Wiki, plugging that again. Once you dig down and find the names of the Beast Tribe currency, you can enter that into Garland Tools database for what I find easier to quickly flip through and see what you can even sell. Because a lot of these items cannot be sold. So let's take the Namazu Beast Tribe from Stormblood and I find that their currency is the Kanban and then I take the Kanban, the, that word, I plug it into Garland Tools and then I can take that and just continue digging through and identify what is tradable and what is not. The only example here is Storm Sap, which when I check Gilgamesh's market board is still selling really, really well. Everything else unfortunately appears to be untradeable though. But now let's apply this idea to one last beast tribe, just to cap off the video. The A Realm Reborn Beast Tribe Kobolds, which I did bring up the Kobolds for their unique marketplace before where you can buy interesting items like the blue land trap leaf for Gil, and then flip it, make profit. But now we have an access to a whole host of other unique items like unidentifiable, unidentifiable or my apologies, which I spoke about earlier that can be traded in for extremely precious grade 3 Thanalan topsoil, which we can then funnel into gardening or sell on the market board. Or alternatively, you also get exclusive dyes like the apple green dye or adamantois green dye, which the adamantois green dye is selling quite well on the Gilgamesh market board. 
Or what about other items? Like you have outdoor furnishings that are the automaton outdoor furnishing or the kobold furnish. Furnish. God. On Gilgamesh, there really aren't even items on the market board for these items. So this market is really open and waiting to be fulfilled by supply and demand. And so little to say, don't discount the little beast tribes of the past. <laughs> they can add up very much to be very profitable too. So we're talking about the Sahagin as well. And God, basically check out all the list of the beast tribes. Definitely a lot of profit hidden away there and markets that people have forgotten about. Anyhow, that is all for this video. And if this guide helps you and you want to help support my channel, I'd be incredibly appreciative if you catapulted a dwarf at that like button and had a Namazu party with my subscribe button. Woo! Anyhow, take care and I hope you have an absolutely fantastic review.